Right, we're going to have our Bible reading and then our thought now, and we're going to look in John's Gospel. So we will look at John chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. And that is on page 1064 of the, uh, the Church Bibles, page 1064 in the Church Bibles. John chapter 2, from verse 1 to 12. But when I was um, planning Wednesday worshippers last um, last year, of course, I didn't know all of this was going to happen, and um, so I thought, well, what could we do? I thought, oh, I, I know, we could. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd like to do the Gospels. I thought perhaps we could look at um, John's Gospel, and I thought, ah, oh, maybe we could look at the seven signs in John's Gospel. So this is the first of the seven signs in John's Gospel. Um, so you might. Um, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get on to the rest of them as, you, as we go through. Uh, but I just thought it would be nice to, to carry on doing that so that, you know, I think you can just get so focused on, you know, the, the whole COVID um, thing. Uh, it's just nice to think about other things and have readings from you know, all over, isn't it? And uh, think about how that applies. So this is John chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 80 to 120 litres. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realise where it had come from though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and brothers and his disciples. There they stayed for a few days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we're going to have a look at that passage, so just keep that open for, uh, for a few minutes. It's a well-known passage, this, isn't it? It's uh, a well-known passage, but, but what does it mean? Uh, Jesus turning water into wine, was he just doing a favour um, to... Uh, to uh, presumably family friends uh, there in, in Galilee. Why, why did he do it? Well, one of the, uh, the things which I find fascinating about this little, this little episode is the, the tension between Jesus and his, and his mother. I don't know if you noticed that as we were reading, but it says, when the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. It's interesting, it says Jesus' mother. It's just like, as if to highlight it, it doesn't just say Mary, Jesus' mother. It says Jesus' mother. Like it's, it's highlighting the fact that, uh, that she's her, his mother. Uh, what do you think she was trying to do? Now, clearly, she's saying, no, Jesus, you know, they've got no more wine here. You know, you go and sort it out. Um, quite, uh, quite what she expected Jesus to do, I don't know. Um, but she obviously knew him to be someone who, who had the ability to, to, to do these things. Um, and Jesus, he comes back at her and says, Woman, why do you involve me? Now, uh, it's important to say that when, when Jesus says woman, he, when, we say, when we say that, that's a bit impolite, isn't it? Say woman, you know, that, that's not a very polite thing to say. In those days, that wasn't, the, the word was just a, you know, just um, I think in other translations they put "dear woman," 
just to kind of say that it wasn't an impolite thing. Um, but Jesus, I think Jesus is simply trying to, to, to say, actually, you know, you're trying to, to influence me you know, as, a, as a mother, but actually, you know, I don't want you to treat me like that anymore. And again, he said, his mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. So she's trying to mother him. You know what mums do? You know, she's trying to get him to, to sort things out. And um, I, know, I know what mums are like. Um, you know, that's the, that's the kind of thing that, that mums do, isn't it? You know, they try to coerce you into, into getting things sorted out. I, my mum used to do that. Um, and uh, to try and get me to, to do the right thing or what she thought was the right thing. Um, but actually, what Jesus, what Jesus knew is that our families are, are more than that. This is what he says in Mark chapter 3, verses 33 and 34. Who are my mother and my brothers? Jesus asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle round him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. So Jesus is saying, actually, his family are the people who who obey God, the people who know God and love and serve him. And that um, in this case, in John chapter 2, Jesus' mother, his earthly mother, is trying to use her position as, as being his mum to try and get him to do something. And Jesus said, no, that it's, you know, you're, um, you, that's not the right thing. That's not the right thing, actually. But nonetheless, he still obeys because Jesus obeyed the commandment, you know, honouring your father and mother. Jesus obeyed that commandment, even if um, he knew that what uh, his mum was asking him to do was not the not the right thing. He still obeyed, um, and and he um, uh, got gets the servants. He says uh, there are six stone water jars which were used for ceremonial washing, and they hold a lot of water, eighty to one hundred and twenty liters. So they were pretty big, and um, that word there, ceremonial washing. It's used a few other times in the uh, in the, the Bible. So, for example, in Luke chapter two, verse twenty-two, a verse which I'm sure you'll be very familiar with at this time of year, um, when the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. So, uh, the purification rites—that's the same word uh, used there. So, these these were jars which were used. To, for kind of the ritual purification, where um, the Jewish people would, um, you know, kind of be cleansed from, from sin, if you like. You know, uh, it was part of that purification, part of that uh, reminder that, you know, we need purification um, from, from God. And Jesus said, fill the jars with water and uh, then, then draw some out, take it to the master of the banquet. And of course they do, and they find that the water has been turned into not just any old wine, not just any old sort of cheap plonk, but it's been turned into the finest wine, the very finest wine. The master of the banquet says, you've saved the best till now. And, um, and that's significant, isn't it? It's not just you know, anything, it's the best, the very best um, that, they, that they've had. And it says Jesus, verse 11, what Jesus did here, was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. So this is what the signs are there uh, for. They're to reveal Jesus. They're to reveal Jesus' glory. That's what they do. And the effect that they should have is the disciples believe. That's there for us to believe. For those who are listening to believe and trust in Jesus. So as we draw these things um, together, I know we've only been through this quickly, I'm sure there are many more things that we could say, but I'd just like to draw out a few things just for us to think about as we, as we move on. Now, I said about you know, Jesus' mother kind of using her, her role as his mother to kind of twist his arm a little bit and get him to do something which he didn't really want to do, which I think he you know, wasn't quite the right thing perhaps. And yet he does it 
And God used it for good. It was the first of the signs that he did which revealed his glory. And it does display something significant about him, as we will see. And I think it just, it just helps me to have confidence. And I hope it, it helps us, as we think about these things, to realise that God's in charge. And that even situations which are not um, ideal, God still uses for, for the right end. You know, the right thing happened. It was meant to be the first sign, even if it didn't happen in in the right way and and how much of what happened in Jesus's particularly in his early life as well as of course at the end uh, didn't happen in you know the right way and yet God used it for good Um, so that was the first thing I thought and the second thing is about the water being turned into wine what was the significance of the water being turned into wine remember the water was for purification now when we take wine, what do you associate wine with, especially in, in church? It's, it's in communion, isn't it? You know, when we take the, the bread and the wine, the wine is like representative of Jesus' blood. So I think the second thing is that it's saying that the, the being purified, being cleansed from sin, is something that happens through Jesus' blood. And it's something that happens when we come to Jesus for, for forgiveness through his blood. And also it's about the, the blessing, receiving the blessings of God. You know, the finest wine. Jesus didn't just provide any old cheap wine, but it was the finest. That's, that's the blessing that comes from God, from, uh, from the, the new creation, from all of the, the things that God's going to do. Jesus brings those blessings to us. So if we want to be blessed and forgiven, then we need to look to Jesus at the end of the day. And it's good to remember that Jesus has got power even over nature itself, isn't it? Especially at the moment. That even water, uh, Jesus has got power over over that. So I'd just like to finish uh, by by asking the question, do we believe and trust in Jesus? Is that something that, have we come to see that he is the one who has the power to forgive us? the power to cleanse us and purify us. He is the one who um, brings God's blessings to us. And, you know, we can trust him in every situation, even to use the the bad things for good at the end of the day. Now, there's a a song which I used to sing when I was at camp as a child, um, a Christian camp, and it's, uh, when Christ is the captain, we can smile at the storm. And I won't sing it for you, obviously, um, but um, maybe later. <laughs> but you know, when Christ is the captain, you can smile at the storm. And I just thought that's maybe a good thing to remember today. That you know, when Jesus is our captain, then we can smile at the storm, even though it's difficult. We know that at the end of the day, He's the one who's got power over over all of these things, and we can trust Him. And so that's really uh, good news for us today. Amen.